Well, you've always heard that showing up early is one of the best ways to show your dedication. But my next guest says, not so fast. What are the worst things you can do as a type A personality? You might think that being an overachiever is always a good thing. But the cheeky scientist is with us today and he says, not so much. Dr. Isaiah Henkel back to set us straight. Welcome back to Smart Life, Dr. Henkel. It's good to have you. Thanks, Dr. Gina. Good to be back. I have to tell you, I've become a junkie. I, I can't lie about it. I, I read your article today about uh, showing up early and 30 other, 32 other pitfalls of type A overachievers. And I have to tell you, I think I do all of them. I need so much help from you, from you. And we just don't have enough time for it all today. But first, I want you to share your story about how you got into looking at this, uh, this topic. Um, it was when you were taking your MCAT, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's right. Um, I signed up for one of those Kaplan training courses. It was a few thousand dollars. I saved all summer for it. It was It's the test you need to take to get into grad school. And it was like a three months of classes. They gave you like 12 different books. Long story short, I wasn't really good at learning with large groups of people, and I was distracted most of the time. And because I there was a cute girl sitting tests. next to you, yes. <laughs> yeah, I might, yeah, something maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so uh, anyway, go ahead. I, it, I didn't get the result I wanted. I, I was trying to learn like everybody else. I never really thought about how I learned best. And as a result, I, I scored really low that year on the MCAT. Luckily, I could take it again, but. That year, I didn't get the result I wanted. Well, anyone could look at your website and figure out very quickly that you're a super smart guy. I would say uh, probably top one to three percent, really, uh, of all the people that th whose work I've ever read, and and I read a lot. And so that's not saying you know that's saying a lot. And and yet you couldn't score the way you wanted to score on a test. What does that have to do with your personality? Because you're obviously a Type A. So people would tend to think that a Type A personality would pretty much always score well on a test, correct? Well, correct. You would think that, but Type A's, they can fall into the trap of being one-dimensional and thinking that always doing more, or always doing a thing uh, a, a specific way, the way they've been doing it forever it is the right way, and that's not always the case. And sometimes it can be hard for type A people to step back. I know too many hardworking people who have, you know, and I wrote this in the article, who have half the influence that they should simply because they refuse to kind of step back and look at the results of their type A behavior. So, so one of the things you say that is a mistake is um, showing up early. Now, this is going to be great news to my husband because <laughs> that's not his thing. But you say showing up early and, and even staying too late and uh, even being too eager is one of the common pitfalls, pitfalls of type A personalities. Really? It's true. And I've read about this and they've done a lot of behavioral studies on it. And showing up early, for example, you know, it's good to show up on time, but by showing up very early, type A's think that they're proving that they work hard, they're always going to be there. But that can be a bad thing because it, 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 what it really shows is that you're disruptive of other people's schedules and you don't know how to manage your time. That's how it comes off. And so the overall theme of this post is try to look at yourself from other people's point of view. You know, maybe think of your audience's point of view, not, not just your own, not just what's best for you, but what's best for other people too, or what's best for getting the result that you want. I, I really seriously read down this list and I do every one of these things. And I, and I have come to a point in my life where I start to realize that these are problems for me. One is feeling guilty. I literally, I feel like sometimes like I live my whole life around whatever is weighing the most on me in terms of guilt. That's a horrible way to live, but I have no idea how to get myself out of it. For other type A's who are listening and find themselves in the same pitfall, what's your best advice? Uh, yeah, again, I, I think stepping back and looking at guilt and, and asking yourself, what does guilt do for me? Can other people see my guilt? And if they can, is there any benefit in that? And, and the answer is no. Like, guilt is not an action. It's not a productive action. You'd be better off uh, forgetting about guilt and doing something to fix uh, the mistake that you made mm -hmm. and learning from it. You say also that um, having a narrow view of hard work can be a pitfall, but I thought hard work was like next to baseball and apple pie as far as American entrepreneurial value, right? Right, and I think having a narrow definition of what hard work is is a major pitfall of a lot of type A people because they just think if they try harder and harder and harder that 
eventually they'll get to where they want to go. And it's not the case in, in uh, college. One of my wrestling coaches said, Isaiah, you're like a fly that keeps trying to get out a window by slamming his face into the window over and over again. <laughs> and, and the message there is, is that you have to be creative. You have to work smart and hard. And sometimes the hardest work of all is thinking outside the box or again, stepping back and reevaluating kind of your method of doing things. And, and sometimes type A's just don't take the time uh, because it does yeah. feel like a distraction from whatever their progress is uh, that they're trying to accomplish at that moment to actually step back and take a look. Um, you say One that you say is uh, that, that they tend to fall into another pitfall, um, apologizing for who you are or spending too much time explaining yourself. I did learn this, I think in graduate school at some point, that uh, especially in terms of assertiveness, if you're making excuses, you know, you say, I'm sorry, you move forward. Um, or if you're, if you're making too much time explaining yourself or apologizing for who you are, it really doesn't come off to the receiver the way maybe you would hope it would, correct? Correct. And there's been studies on this too. People tend to think, typing people tend to think that if they apologize, they'll make somebody happy and it'll look good on them because then they look like, you know, like they have a sense of altruism or that they're a giver or that they're, again, working hard or putting themselves last. But that's actually a bad thing. And, and there's a particular study in the European Journal of Social Psychology that showed that refusing to apologize is better because it actually fills you with a sense of empowerment, confidence, and kind of greater feelings of integrity. So the key message here is that if you apologize for who you are, you're not only going to be seen as less in other people's eyes, you're also going to be seen less in your own eyes. Now, one of the criticisms of, uh, you know, looking at the DISC, which is another uh, inventory, personality inventory we're looking at a little bit later, and I realize your article specifically is on type A pitfalls, um, but the driver in, in the DISC inventory is most likely a type A. I don't see any way around that. And one of the accusations about the driver um, is that they tend to be insensitive to other people's needs, that they tend to be very focused on progress and sort of run over the top of people, um, perhaps not meaning to. Um, but you say that um, there is something in the type A personality that cares a lot about recommendations and what other people think. That surprises me because I, I just tend to think that type A's don't spend a lot of time thinking about what other people think. Right, so they they do when it has when it's relevant to their progress and to oh, getting ahead. That makes sense. Right. Yes. Right. So the, the recommendation becomes very valuable in that sense to to a type A. Uh, that that makes total sense, and I and I appreciate that clarification. Um, never quitting. Aren't we supposed to admire people that don't give up? Isn't that like the the quintessential success story? Is that Abraham Lincoln who ran for office X amount of times before he ever won, and the person who keeps on trying the the, the engine little engine that could, right? Right. We and we like to pigeonhole things. We like to make things, especially Type A's. We like to make things very black and white. Oh yes. Right. Never quit. Always go forward. But guess what? Sometimes you need to quit stuff because if you don't quit. That negative relationship, for example, it's going to drag you down and you're never going to fulfill your dreams. If you don't quit that bad habit or that dead-end job, you're, you're never going to fulfill your, your full potential. So I, I think you have to be very careful. And again, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. And I wanted to be very careful in writing this that you know, it doesn't mean that you should be a slacker, but it does mean that you should be smart and not one-dimensional. That makes sense. Now, one other thing that I tend to have a principle, no drama. If I get to know people that are dramatic, I tend to kind of push them onto the back burner because I, I feel like I don't have time for it. But you say never causing drama can be a pitfall. How's that? <laughs> yes, and, and this is one of those things where, you know, you have to be careful and, and intelligent at the same time. But let's face it, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And sometimes you have to speak up for what you want and you have to call people out when they're holding you back or when they're doing things like being passive aggressive. We've all probably worked with somebody that's been passive aggressive. Letting people get away with this kind of behavior empowers them. So sometimes you have to stir things up. Sometimes you have to be able to go face first into a little bit of conflict or even cause it. Now, what if a person is 100% hard charging type A and they'd really rather be a type B? Can they change? It, it's hard. I mean, I think they can learn certain behaviors that will help them relax or approach things from a different angle, but I don't think they should try to change their overall personality so much as just channel their current personality in different ways, ways that benefit them, ways that serve them best. 
Well, that all does make a set, make a lot of sense. It is the cheeky scientist with us right now, Isaiah Henkel. So glad to have you with us, doctor. Tell people where they can find you. Uh, CheekyScientist.com. CheekyScientist.com. You don't want to miss it. I have to tell you, I was in a restaurant with the Politichicks from Politichicks TV night before last, and I could not stop telling the waitress about you and your post that you did on what being a waitress teaches you about success in life. And so I'm quoting Thank you, you all the time, and I know that our viewers will find themselves doing the same thing. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Hinkle. Hope to have you back Thank soon. You. Up next, we're going to help you solve the people puzzle. Figuring out your personality and the personalities of others is key to solving the problems in life. And my next guest is an expert in personality profiling, so you aren't going to want to miss this. Remember, coming up later in the show, we'll go to your calls and emails. 888-650-8176 is the number. Stay with us. You're watching Smart Life, and I'm Dr. Gina.